Okay, basically I'm going to be talking about double hook traces, uh, combo traces if you'd like to call it. For the first one, and this is what I call my Mission Rocks trace. If I go to Mission Rocks and that, and I'm fishing in a lot of rocks, in your many places like that where you're fishing, only in rocks that are, hey, I tell you, hectic. This is a trace that I would use. And again, it's more for eel tail barbel, being the target species, but you will catch speckles, you will catch, and I'm talking small speckles, yeah? You will catch spade fish and little rock fish, rock cod, um, any of those smaller fish species. This is what I'd use. Okay, starting off, and I'm just gonna explain to you what we've got here. We've got our Kingfisher 70 nylon has been our hook snoot. That'll be the one that goes between the two hooks. Well, when I say between the two hooks, from the hook to the swivel, hook to swivel. The main part of it is 8.0, can be 9.0 if you want. Um, 31 kilos around there in the Kingfisher brand. Our tuna circles, 6.0 and 3.0. The 6.0 is the bait that we're gonna be using at the bottom, normally the bigger one. So a 6.0 hook for that part of the actual trace is ideal, especially for the bigger rock cod. And then the top hook, because you're going to be catching smaller, smaller fish species, grey grunters, stuff like that, a little 3-0. Two dangles. There are different ways of doing it, but for this purpose, I'm going to show you the dangle one. And of course, our combo swivel. It can be a 5x6, um, 4x5, doesn't make a difference, it's up to you. Uh, Anti-tangle free sleeves just stops them from knotting up quite uh, nicely. This is the quarter version of anti-tangle free sleeves. And of course the scissors and we'll do the baiting just now. Okay, to start off with, one meter of 8.0, -oh, 9.0 -oh, around there. Two swivels. The bottom part of the swivel is what we're going to attach this to and I'll just go through the whole thing once I've actually done everything. This is a figure of eight. In all my traces, 99% of the time, it's the only knot that I actually do is our figure of eight. Okay, so I'm opening it up. There's the figure of eight. Lubrication goes quite nicely. Ah, let's do that. Okay meter in length which gives me more than enough of the tag end to the big R of the actual swivel the top hook was on the small R the bottom hook the bottom part of the trace is going to be onto the big R there okay so basically what I'm going to do is just figure of eight here and pull tight slide down pull tight Okay, so basically that is what it looks like. The top hook, big R. The bottom part of the hook is going to be attached to the big R over there. And of course our sinker snooting is going to come off that one there. Let's go and do it. 25 kilo. What we do, and again, just going to cut a bit of nylon on you. And again, it's just a simple figure of eight. Although it's a circle hook that I'm using, all I'm gonna do is tie a figure of eight onto it. There are other knots that you can use, but I just find sticking to one knot makes life easy. There we go, there's your figure of eight, and all I'm gonna do is put my finger in there and open it up to form that figure of eight that I'm looking for. And there we go. It's opened up now. There's a figure of eight. Pull it reasonably tight onto the shank. Slide it all the way down. Pull as hard as you can. Get something to pull on. Okay. Okay, that's pretty much what we are trying to achieve. First one done. Second one. Again, exactly the same. Through the R, around three times. You can use a straw if you want, you can use a pen if you want, it's up to you. There's lots of ways of tying it. As long as it pulls tight on the actual shank of the hook, there's your figure of eight there. If you guys have a look closely, you'll see the figure of eight forming. Pull tight. 
slide it all the way down. Yeah. Pull as hard as you can. There we go. Done. It's very wiry because we're using such thick nylon. Like I said before, we're fishing in the rocks. And I'm looking for about 20 centimeters. That's all I'm looking for on this trace at the end of the day. So I'm going to cut it about there. And that one. Okay. Just a little secret to this trace is a little glow, um, I can say flotation. And I'll show you what they look like now. This is what they look like. They glow in the dark. It's a little foam uh, flo uh, float, if I can call it that, uh, available for most tackle stores. And all we do is stick it in and through. Especially on the bottom hook. Very important that you use a whole one. On the top one, what we do is we cut it in half because we don't need that much movement. And to do that, all we do, just a little bit more than halfway, we just roll our knife on it. Just to get it to cut into it nicely and there it goes. Okay. Now what we do with that one is we stick it and then find that one. From the top, the white side basically goes to the hook. And the reason being is you want as much glowing reflection, if you want, light in the water as possible. So that's going to sit in the water and your bait's going to come over this and I'll show you how we rig that. Okay, so there we go. Our anti-tangle free sleeves, we just slide on. That just stops it from tangling up. Although they are short hook snoots, it's just basically for preventing any tangulation that might occur. Okay. Bottom hook. Into that one. And let's just tie. Again, it's just a simple figure of eight, guys. Okay, cut that tag end off. <clears throat> the anti-tangle free sleeve just protects the knot quite a bit and keeps the line a bit straighter. What we do is just slide him over and you can see how I'm sliding it just over the top part of it. There we go. So it still rotates all the way around but it still keeps it nice and straight and away from the actual sinker part of it. There's one done. That'll be the bottom part of the hook. This is the top part of the hook. Remember, big R to your leader. And again, this is very short. It's not a very long hook snoot that I use. It's about 15 centimeters, slightly shorter than what I use for my bottom hook. I don't want it to move around too much because I'm fishing in amongst the rocks in the white water looking for the edible fish. A little hint is just if you lubricate it, it just slides over a lot easier onto your swivels. And over the knot. And there we go. Okay. So basically if you look at it nice and closely, you'll see it's come over the knot, over the swivel. It still rotates 360 degrees, which is absolutely perfect, exactly what we want. And that's going to go to our leader, that's going to go down to the bottom hook. And our sinker, so let's put all this away. The sinker snooting part of it needs to be a bit lighter. So what I do is, I go... 25 kg I don't want to keep on changing my sinker all the time but it wears quite nicely because it's thicker so 
just want to get my four ounce bell. There we go, there's a four ounce bell. And again, you're just attaching it. Like that. You also don't want it to be too long. This is about 30 centimeters in length. Another good little trick that we've learned over the last couple of years is if you actually flatten it. Stick it in a vise and flatten this bell sinker or hit it with a 10 pound hammer on an anvil and flatten it so that it's actually flat. It stops it from rolling in the sand or around the rocks. And when you do retrieve it, because it's flat, it comes to the surface a lot quicker. So that's just something on that sinker. <clears throat> okay. Two ways of rigging the bait for our Mission Rocks Trace. This is very simple. The first one is you can take a mozzie, a mackerel head, whatever, just through the lips, chop it off behind the gills, throw that. Works very well. What I like to do is to use a lot of chocker. The problem with those smaller heads and stuff like that is the pickers, the grey grunter, get to it very quickly. And again, all this is is a hair curler with a little bit of foam in it and a bit of Dacron just attached to it. There's nothing fancy. You've seen now I've made them before. You can go into our previous um, ASFN shows and have a look at how I make them. So that goes through. I like to go through it at least twice to give it a bit of strength and to get the spacing right. Third time. Okay. Cut off that part. Okay, so there's the first one with a dangle hair curler rigged. This here, we like to jam a little toothpick in it to stop it from actually moving up and down the actual line. And I'll show you with the toothpick how we do that one. I'll just get the second one done. <clears throat> and again, very simple, exactly the same. What I'm going to do with the top one is I'll make it a lot smaller. So that's quite a big dangle. I'll just take it and literally cut it in half. Get my Kingfisher cotton, latex cotton. And I just make it a lot smaller. So when you're fishing in and around reefs, this is the trace that works the best for it. And to finish it off. And don't worry about the neatness of it. It's going to be covered. Okay, so we just take our second hook, our top hook. And all we're going to do is go straight through. Turn it around. And through again. Just to neaten it off. Okay, so there's the second one. So I'm going to show you the full trace. <coughs> okay, and I'm going to have to stand back for this because it is quite a long trace. Your leader is going to go to the top. And that would be the second one. Okay, so basically that's what the full trace looks like for Mission Rocks. Baking up is so simple. I'll go through it now. Okay, basically what we got is our toothpicks and how we stop this float from moving up and down is take our toothpick, insert it behind the actual nylon like that, squeeze it in until it's tight and break it off. There we go. That toothpick no longer will move. Do the second one. Stick that in, like that, break it off, and we're good to go. Okay, so very simply, baiting. Mission Rocks trace is very simple. To bait it, what we're going to do is use a lovely piece of chocker. I've got prawn, you can use crayfish, you can use red eye, you can use whatever you want. The basics stay the same, and I'll show you how we do it. I'm just going to butterfly this prawn, this lovely Edcan uh, pink prawn that I've got here. Okay, so all I'm doing is taking the shell off. And I'm exposing as much of that flesh as possible. 
It's more attractant than anything else. Okay, lovely. One lovely pink prawn, mm, nice and oily. This is my chocolate that I've got. And the top part is what I'm looking for most of. There we go, put that away. <clears throat> okay. You can see there's a little groove that runs down here. This one was probably the best part of the whole chocolate to use. I'm just making one long strip all the way along. Like that. One more. One lovely chocolate like that. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut a piece about that size and I'm going to use a chocker hammer to beat it. Here's my cotton. Okay, so what I'm going to do, just move that away. I'm just going to take this lovely chocker. It's now a nice and thick part of it and I'm just going to cut a piece about that size. Remember, that's flesh side up. I need to turn it around because I need the skin side as the part that I actually want to break on this. Grab my chocker hammer. And with the very thick side of your chocker hammer, I'm going to beat it. That's the skin side of it. Basically, if you looked at it, that would be the part that actually has all that coloring in on it. Okay, so we're going to take it and we're going to hit it. So it's going to get noisy. All I'm doing is just breaking that skin down so it becomes a lot softer. Okay, and I'm cutting it into two pieces. And the easiest way is just to cut it down at a slight angle. If you have a look there, I've just cut it at a slight angle. Okay, here we go. Go back to doing what I do best. Clean this. Okay, here we go. Let's start with the bottom one. We're going to take our chocker with the fleshy side inwards and over those spikes, like so, and we just wrap it around. So now we just take it and we wrap it around. Latex cotton. And again, I like to use the thin latex cotton for this, just so you don't see it as much. Okay, so there's latex cotton wrapped around it. The second piece, any part that is exposed. And I do use quite a bit of chocker on the bottom one because it's a bigger bait. Like that. And it's nice, it's soft. It allows the, the smaller grey grunter and stuff like that to feed on it. Okay, so there we go, it's very smelly, sticky, nice bait. Then what I'm going to do is the chocker strips that I've just cut. It's quite thick, very fleshy. You can take a chocker hammer and just lightly bash them, I'm just going to quickly do that. It just gives it more movement in the water it just softens it up a bit but you don't want to soften it up too much otherwise the smaller fish will pull it off and to rig it it's as simple as this straight through the center straight through the center same length same everything absolutely perfect next one that one there now i'll use this one here okay i'm just going to beat it with a chocker hammer again And again, it's done with the thick side of the actual chocker, hammer, that is, and the next one goes on. Also, hopefully down the middle. So now what that looks like in the water when it's floating around, and my toothpicks actually move, so I'm going to stick another one in there. Where do I put my toothpicks? Okay. 
Okay. Now that's going to float up. It looks like a little bit of a chocker moving around in the water. It looks like a little octopus. It moves around like this in the water, backwards and forwards. Those tentacle arms are moving around. And of course any rock rod around, speckle, um, eel tail barbel, because that's our target species when we go there, will eat that. It's a small enough bait that they swallow the whole thing in. Very simple, that's a plain chocker bait on the bottom. Now obviously there's an angle to where you're actually holding the rod. So what do we do with the top one? Is exactly the same, except it's done with prawn. We take that prawn, we just measure off where we want it cut. And that's basically what we want to do. So straight down like that. We then take the inside part around it and we just wrap it up. Take our Kingfisher latex cotton, our thin. And this gives off a lot of smell in the water. It doesn't last as long as the big one does or the chocker does. So basically you see what happens there. We then take the thicker side, take our chocker hammer again, and we just lightly tap it. We don't want to do too much. It just makes it easier to mold around that part of it. And there we go. So it's a nice big blob of pink prawn, red prawn, crayfish that we're putting on. And put a lot of cotton, don't be afraid. Those fish aren't too, too shy when it comes to cotton there, especially at night time. Okay. Now I've got one single piece of chocker for this bait. It's not too long. What we do is we cut two little slits in it. Just to give it more movement in the water. Turn it around. Okay, so very simply, that's what it looks like. It's two legs on either side that's cut out. We then take our hook, and once again, straight through the center. Again, that will move around. There's a lot of movement in it over there. It's got its light. Obviously, when you're baiting up at night time, you're charging these little um, glow beads, uh, flotation little floats up and of course it's like a little green light out in the dark everyone's attracted to it and that's it there it's as simple as that remember your leader is going to go onto the top hook the small hook is the main line all the way through to that one that now if it's lying on the ground there will rotate around like that as the current's pushing it. Okay, that's why you don't tie your main hook onto this one here. It's a straight line that you're looking for that you're pulling your sinker on. Another little trick as well while we're on this is to actually take that sinker and make one little knot. You can put two if you want, but one little knot just above the actual sinker. So if that sinker gets stuck, and you break it off, you're only going to break it over there. So you can tie another one straight onto it. You don't waste time. It works well in the, amongst the rocks like that. And I tell you, you can throw that quite hard before the, you actually break that knot off if you're casting. But again, this is what it looks like. That's there. That's here. This is moving around like that in the water. Any rock rod that's around will basically eat this little bait or that bait there. My mission rocks trace looks like that or if you're fishing in the trans sky and you're fishing for fish where you're getting stuck all the time with jayhawks that's basically it there guys let's put the two next to one another here so you can get a better idea of what it looks like it looks like that and then that looks like that big hook small hook good to go